Thank you everyone for joining us for AKA The Greatest Podcast Ever, a podcast series where I am joined by weird people and we talk about weird anime. Akira, of course, being a weird anime. And today I'm joined by the very special Everything Animated. While it is true that all of my guests are special in one way or another, Everything Animated was the first friend I made through doing YouTube videos. He's been around since I did my first review on Steins Gate like over four years ago. So it is great to finally have him be part of the podcast. So if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Everything Animated. Uh, I haven't really been doing this for a while. Uh, it's it's been a long time since I made me some videos, but I was really gung ho uh, back in 2014 and 15, and then YouTube just kind of took down a lot of my videos, and uh, I kind of got sick of it. But I've always been around to comment on uh, on your videos, so uh, I've uh, tried to keep myself a little bit in the game. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I always enjoy your comments when I see them. Yeah, it's funny because I I remember I posted. I think it was on the Crunchyroll forum. I'm like, someone please join my channel. And you were like, I'll do it. <laughs> you were yeah, that's why I found you. Because like, someone was posting, like, who's their favorite YouTuber? And I saw this guy saying, hey, you should check out my channel. I'm a small channel. I was like, I'm a small channel too. Let's go be friends. Y- yeah. And that's kind of what happened. Yeah, we kind of both started at the same time. And you know, I'm happy to see you at almost 250. You know, that's, yeah, I'm at 2:43 as of me looking at it like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, that's that's really great. I mean, I I don't know how I've managed to have 80 subscribers not making anything all these years, but it's uh, it's, it's something. Yeah, I try not to insult my viewers too much, so maybe that helps, or maybe that would uh, do the opposite. I, I I hope I don't insult mine. I just I insult anime. That that's that's the one thing I insult. It's fun to insult anime, especially certain anime like Acura. Very fun to insult it. <laughs> oh, wait, was that not our uh, transition? Segway, that's what those are called. Uh, it's, it's whatever, man. I mean, <laughs> you can do what you want with it. All right, yeah. Okay, I'm getting weird Skype messages, so I'm going to put that on Do Not Disturb. I will respond to those later. So. Okay, uh, so we both recently rewatched Acura. Uh, a good place to start would be, when did you first watch Akira? What made you want to watch it? Now, is it called Akira? Or is it... Because I remember in the dub, they call it Akira. Yeah, they call it Akira. That's where I got it from. Because I watched it like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I mean, I've always called it Akira. Because that's what it looks like. But I mean, hell, I, I don't know. I But uh, the first time I watched it was... Uh, I was a teenager... I was in high school. I was definitely getting introduced to a lot of anime, and I figured, hey, let's uh, let's go as far old school as we can. And I, you know, was watching Ghost in a Shell, and I decided to watch Akira, Akira, whatever. And uh, it definitely, you know, changed a lot of things as far as like my perspective on anime, because it was it was a, a it, it was a game changer when it came to uh, that type of movie back in the day. Yeah, like for animated movies, there's nothing like it that came out before it, at least as far as I know, or at least nothing that reached this level of critical acclaim. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 definitely inspired a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of genres, a bunch of movies. I think a lot of people, uh, this is Kanye West's favorite uh, anime is uh, Akira. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, he u- huh. he used it in um, in his uh, music video Stronger. If you if you watch that again, not only does it have Daft Punk, but it has the scene where he's on the table and they're like examining him. It's totally from oh. Akira. Maybe I do kind of remember that. I'm not a big fan of his music, but I kind of remember that one now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this this one. This is really good as far as definitely the animation in this this movie was uh, was was. I looked up some notes here, and I guess for its time, it was a very groundbreaking sort of anime because it, um, like, you know how in old school animes they kind of like moved a little lip flaps and they would just, you know, like to just do the real, save on animation, so they just kind of do very minimal movement of the of the lips. In this one, you could they matched pretty much everything as far as making it sound like that they were speaking, you know, like it was matching with the lips fluently. It was really. Really cool to look at, and you just look at it like, wow, that's amazing. 
Yeah, just like all the movement was going on in the background too. Uh, like I remember one of the first scenes at that bar where you just had like the guy playing a video game in the background, completely irrelevant to the plot. <laughs> but it was like they took the time to actually show that happening, or just like everything going on. There was hardly ever anything where it was just the character talking, and that was all the movement. Yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely a lot going on in the film as far as fluid movement, and it's just it's just really a pretty like you could just turn off like mute it and just put on some music in the background and just watch it it's a gorgeous gorgeous film yeah yeah very much stylistic too which for me i'm not a huge fan of something that only has the animation going for it but that's definitely something that would catch people's attention uh-huh yeah it's it's definitely like i said it's definitely a gorgeous film it's it's very steampunk uh so, no not steampunk cyberpunk it's very cyberpunk like uh like a Blade Runner ish, the way that it looks, it's 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 really, really well put together. And actually, something else I thought of is that uh, they say that the big explosion, the in, the, si- the starting thing happened in 1988, and then this story took place 30 years later, so it would be 2018, which is the current year. Mm-hmm. I don't. Did, well, do we plan that this way? I actually forget. <laughs> well, it actually. I think the movie, it, it actually was 31 years later, so it takes place in 2019. Okay, they might have said like about 30, so. Yeah, it's about 30, but it it has been 30 years since the movie came out, which is kind of funny to think about because a, a funny thing about that is this movie, Akira, uh, pretty much predicted the future. You know, Tokyo, the Tokyo Games are happening in 2020. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, you're right. Isn't isn't that something? Uh-huh. It, it it predicted the future with this this uh I mean, obviously we hope that it's not going to become Neo Tokyo and there's going to be World War 3 and yeah, all these preferably killings. Avoid that. <laughs> and all that good stuff, but yeah, it's um I just, I just when I when they said that oh it's gonna happen in 2020 the Tokyo Olympic Games I literally said Akira <laughs> this is it predicted at least that part I wonder if anyone on the committee to decide that was a fan of Akira and that's why they chose to do it that way you know what I'm gonna I'm calling this right now if they don't have a scene from the movie when the 2020 Tokyo uh, Summer Olympic Games come out they, it's a missed opportunity on their part I'm telling you right now oh yeah for sure especially like with how big <laughs> anime is and how big Akira is for like the history of anime mm-hmm I mean maybe not so much make a big giant weird baby mutation thing happen but I mean that would be weird <laughs> but just I don't know make make the the motorcycle from the show cuz that motorcycle was sick. Yeah, that's like a more subtle reference too. Like you don't have to be super understanding of a character to say, "Oh, this is a cool motorcycle." Oh, absolutely. That uh you see just have a parade of them coming down and you go, "Hey, they're paying homage. It's yep. a Kira down there." Yeah, that's uh I thought that was pretty neat myself. Mm-hmm. And I guess my answer to the question to get kind of back on topic, I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The best podcasts are one where we forget what the topic is. <laughs> I think I first saw it like three or four years ago. I was somewhat new to anime, but I had watched Arcada's videos where he was like saying it's one of the, like five anime to watch before you die. And so I was like, okay, I need to check these out. And it's only a movie, so I figured why not give it a try this like Sunday afternoon or whatever day of the week that was. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's uh, I, I would definitely say it's definitely one of the top animes to see before you die because of just how just just the overall history and how important the uh, the film is. Right, even if you don't like it all that much, which I'm not a big fan of it, but it's just for like the historical significance factor. I'd say yes, check this out so at least you understand what Acura or Akira or whatever you call it is. Mm-hmm. I definitely think Akira is one of the. One of the big films, because not only did it, like, premiere in America along with, you know, Ghost in a Show many years ago and all that, but I think it kind of gave a chance for Americans to see, so this is, uh, this is anime and this is coming from Japan. This is really weird stuff. What, uh, yep. what are they doing? Yeah, and so, like, they're... Like, anime offers something different than Western animation, because even back then, like, most Western animation was, like, kids' shows. And this is something mm-hmm. that is very like a mature animated story. And I think 
when it comes to shows or a film like this, it kind of showed that not just because it's animated and brightly colored and with car, you know, it's a cartoon doesn't mean it's for kids. This I would definitely not have my son watch something as gruesome as this film. So he didn't rewatch it with you last night. Oh please! <laughs> How old's your son again? Uh, he's eleven. Oh. I mean, he's getting there, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think eleven is a good, even still is a good year for for someone to watch Akira. Yeah. Well, my sister watched it. And I think she was like fourteen or fifteen, and it ended up giving her nightmares because she watched it right before bed at like four a.m. Huh. Well, I'm there. You go. Fourteen years old and giving him nightmares. He's, couldn't imagine at eleven. You know. Yeah. I thought he was younger, but I guess that means I've known you for a while. Yeah, it's, I can't believe it's it's been, what, over four years now? Yeah. 2014? Yeah. <sighs> Time flies when uh, when you're making videos. <laughs> Is that the old saying? <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah, a lot has changed for me in four years. I yeah, kind of know what I'm doing now, it. but not really. Yeah. Yeah. You Didn't you used to say that you just you hated editing, and now look at you, Mr... Seems like you're doing this like every week, every other week or something. Oh, I still don't like editing. I just got a friend to help me out with uh, some of them. Oh, okay. That's nice. It's it. <laughs> I mean, I guess that would make you more interested in doing it too. Please do this for me. He's <laughs> just dumping onto your friends. <laughs> yeah, say so here. I'll, I'll bribe you in tacos or something. Okay. I mean, if you could just mail those tacos to me, go ahead. <laughs> Hopefully they arrive fresh. We'll, we'll work on that later. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not that good at editing, but I know I like can do the basics fine. In my, I know how to not make my computer crash every hour as I do it. Well, I mean, if you can not make your computer crash, I think you pretty much have made it <laughs> in the business. Is that what they say? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess another question, since we were talking about how we first got into it, since we both rewatched it recently, do, are your thoughts any different now than they were when you first saw it? Uh, I think as far as, um, when I first saw it, I was completely confused as much as I think most of the world was when it first came out. And to this day, I couldn't tell you what the ending was. You know, I I couldn't tell you what happened or why someone turned into a spark of light. And then, you know, you know, I, I... it's fun to watch and it's fun to just see, but as far as the ending goes, if someone was to say, "Can you explain the ending to Akira?" I'd look at him in the face and say, "I had no idea." Yeah, we should probably warn our viewers that there would be spoilers here. So I guess you could probably assume that with an Akira podcast. And first of all, if you've never seen Akira, w- what are you doing with your life? Go watch it. Yes, go watch it. I'm not. You don't have to like it. You don't have to understand understand it. But just go watch it. It's been parodied in so many films and shows. I think South Park did one, Robot Chicken did one. It's like, you know the film even if you've never seen it. It's always fun when I like watch something and like start to get like, oh, that was a cultural reference to that thing. Yeah. Like there's a couple like, uh, like for Western movie Office Space, I finally saw that and was like, okay, now a lot of things make sense. <laughs> and I can relate to my job very much with that movie. Ah, <sighs> good show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, when I rewatched it recently, I forgot how confusing and weird it was. So that kind of caught me off guard. It also seemed like it took a while for me to really get into the story and where they were going with it. Because it felt like a lot of the characters I introduced at the start didn't really matter except for Tetsuo and Kaneda. Mm-hmm. I, for me, I kind of felt as if, like... Because this uh, anime is based off a of manga, pretty much like everything is. Yeah. And I almost feel like it was one of those where if you didn't read the manga, it, the movie was almost like assuming as if you read the manga. So it kind of left a few things unexplained because I had to look up a few things just to even understand, oh, okay, this is what's going on. That's why this is happening did you at all get that there was corrupt politics going on? I saw that it was happening, <laughs> but yeah, it was like it was like one of the things he briefly touched on, but didn't really get into at all. Mm-hmm. 
And I almost feel as if if you're, I mean, I get it, it's based off of manga, whatever. If but I feel as if if you're going to like uh, try to stay faithful or, or do whatever, maybe do a little better flushing out of the details. Yeah, than, than, you know. I had heard before that the anime compressed a lot from the manga, and watching it this time, I can definitely feel like there's a lot in the manga that they explain exactly what's going on, as opposed to just gloss hand over. Yeah. And something else I saw when looking uh, stuff up about this is that the manga actually didn't finish until two, until two years after the anime came out. Funny. That, that seems to be a trend. It was a trend back then as it is now, it seems yeah. like. It's saying some things never change. <laughs> yes, and if you've watched any of my videos or follow me on Twitter, you'll know I am quite annoyed by anime I really like, but then they're incomplete. It's like, okay, where's the rest of the story? I like this. I don't want to read a manga. I don't like manga. Give me more anime. Oh yeah, I uh, I have a. <laughs> I hope it's still up there if YouTube hasn't gotten rid of it. But I have a top ten uh, video um, anime that I want to see make sequels to, and I think one of them was made, but everything else was was not. And Is Twin Tails on your list? Uh, no. Uh, okay, your list high, is wrong then. I want to say High School of the Dead. I know will never become a sequel because the guy who was supposed to finish the manga died. So I'm never going to see a High School of the Dead sequel ever, and it pisses me off to know that. Unless they did like anime only, but at the same time, it feels like it's been so long, so why would they do that? Yeah, and that's another thing that almost, you know, it's a side top conversation, whatever, but, you know, as far as anime goes, is that they'll make these great shows, and then they'll be so far gone that whenever... You feel like, oh, it's time to make another one. Five years have passed, and it's like, no one cares anymore. You know, yeah. you, sh- you should have made it back when uh, when you did. Well, that was like with Titan, with so much of the hype fading over the, like, four years it was. Yeah, the tech on Titan. Yeah, 13 the, to 17. The thing that pissed me off about that was they decided to make that attack on titan jr bullshit as a side story and then out comes one punch man and people forget all about it and they're like oh shit we need to play catch up now (laughs) yeah i ended up liking the junior high one but yeah it definitely was an attack on titan oh that thing pissed me off i i i swore off attack on titan until i saw season two and i was like okay i'm back in and i'm still watching it as we go (laughs) season two is good season three i i'm putting it on hold so like, at the end of the year, I'm just going to spend a week, catch up on it, and hopefully be amazed. Uh, season 3 is amazing, because Levi's pretty much, like, the main character, and he's, like, one of my favorite characters in that show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's always cool, so, like, seeing him as the focus. Yeah. Yeah. He's He is a badass in this, this season. Just... Okay. Mm. I caught that he was going to be important from the opening, because, like, I love that opening, but I haven't actually seen the show. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really been watching many shows this year. Just uh, Tag on Titan, My Hero Academia, and then a few ones here and there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, back to Acura. If, let's see, what's the... Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I was already talking about how it felt like a lot of the stuff at the beginning wasn't really... Like, it was glossed over so much that I wasn't able to get drawn into the characters. So that, that made me feel it was kind of boring for a while. And then it felt like a lot of the stuff going on just did not fully make sense like i kind of saw what was going on but i was not expecting to be like so lost it or just seeing things right why is this right it um it definitely doesn't focus much on at least for me it doesn't feel like it focuses a lot on like why should we get to know these characters other than maybe tetsuo and and, uh, kamida those are those are those are really the only yeah, sorry, go, um, those are really the only people that I remember. But then there's like a woman in there. There's <laughs> like there's like the two girls. Yeah, there's a the colonel. There's, there's, the there's colonel. kids in there that are all shriveled up and look like. <laughs> oh yeah, the psychic the psychic, psychic old, old man, man kids. kids. <laughs> there was the person oh, at the beginning that got it. shot to a million pieces. <laughs> I actually forgot about that. So because, you say so. like, he was with one of the psychic kids at the beginning, and it's like, who was that person? Why was he even with them? I don't know. I mean, could you... I, I, I couldn't tell you why. I just know he got shot to a million pieces, and it was cool to look at. <laughs> okay. The show is very cool to look at. That much is true. Yeah. 
again, I also thought some of like Tetsuo's hallucinations or what was going on with his powers was hard to follow because I was like, is this real? Is this his hallucination? Is it kind mm-hmm. of both? Especially when he was like in the hospital. It reminded me some of Perfect Blue, if you've seen that uh, show. Or that I don't movie. think I've seen that movie. Okay, yeah, it's another o- older one, which is really well known and well received. Well, apparently not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, except for me. Except for you. Except for and me. other people haven't seen it. Yeah, I thought you might like that one since you'd like a lot of the older no, shows. I love the older shows. I guess, I mean, you know, maybe I have heard of it. I it just, I bet if someone was to tell me what the show was about, I'd probably remember what it was. Okay. But, but yeah, it had a lot of it where it's like halluc- you're seeing it through the main character's point of view who, who was hallucinating, so. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Tetsuo and Kaneda, I did like their their dynamic and their relationship. How like before Kaneda was the one in charge, he had all the power. Mm-hmm. But now that Tetsuo has this power, he's now resenting Kaneda a lot and going against him. Yeah, yeah, I feel. And this really like conflicts with Kaneda's pride. Yeah, I really feel like that part was really one of the only parts that was done well. Was the was the uh, I guess you can call it the relationship between these two characters. That was the only thing that was really done well as far as you understanding it. Because everybody understands. you got your friends. You maybe have some friends that either you're the wuss or you have someone that you just look after. And, you know, you can relate, you can right. relate to that. But as far as everything else, uh, psychic powers because the military wants it. And I felt like they were trying to explain it too much, and their explanation didn't make sense. Instead of leaving it as some like magic thing, they were trying to justify and say, "Oh, this is the next step of human evolution. It's the ultimate energy inside people and memory and all these things." Mm-hmm. And yeah, kind of made a comment about this doesn't make sense, and I agree with him. <laughs> right? It's pretty. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that that's pretty yes. much uh, the audience uh, talking right then and there. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they're trying to portray Kanda as a type of video, and I'm like, no, he agree- he's smart here. This doesn't make any sense. Or like how they have the doctor like reading off the data, and I was like, there's no way this data makes any sense to anyone. How does the doctor know what's going on? Or like, how can the doctor see that this data looks like the beginning of the universe? Yeah, and that there, there goes back to the ending again, because I, I guess uh, as I looked on uh, Wikipedia, my wonderful source here, Apparently, the ending is something about, like, he gets these powers, Kami, uh, sorry, Tetsuo gets these powers, they trigger a big bang to create a better universe, and Tetsuo is now God? It's like Tetsuo's in that new universe? Yeah, and he's God now. He like, oh. God. It's, okay. It's, uh, did you get that at all? Because I sure as hell didn't. No. I, I, I... Maybe I should go read the manga. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what will make it all, uh, like, a better. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of a lot of plot holes. A lot of stuff that just makes you go. I I have no idea what's going on. But yeah, like, what drugs are these people on? Seriously, this is this is uh, this is why you don't drop a atomic bomb on people. <laughs> And this is why you don't do drugs and then make anime. Yep. Because then stuff comes and that happens. And then, like, then uh, Tetsuo will turn into a monster thing and then they'll be blown up and create a Big Bang and a new universe being God. Yep. That's... Because... Because things. <laughs> because science. <laughs> because Yeah, that's what they... I guess that's what you could say it was, is that Akira was scientists trying to create another God. I guess. Yep, and they succeeded but like at a big cost like showing the danger of like going overboard with science Mm -hmm. and I guess you could see there's like that tying into like the religious ideals of like uh like the religious guys like worshiping Akira saying he'll come back and all that uh, even though he's been dead the whole time yeah it's I think that's more of like a Jesus reference you know dies gets resurrected come back you know rapture and all that good stuff right yeah so that was definitely there too yeah, so you have, like, all these, like, grand uh, parties, like, you have the political ones, the military one, the religious ones, all kind of in conflict, and the scientific one. And then, but the focus of the story is on, like, Tetsuo and Kaneda, like, two individuals kind of thrown into all this. Yeah. 
yeah, that's what I got from it too. Just just a whole bunch of things going on at the same time when I feel like they could have just focused on one thing. Yeah, it's like there was too much to compress into a single movie. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe had they done it, I guess, a bit differently, they could have actually turned it into like an actual show instead of a, a two-hour long movie, you know? Especially nowadays where, you know, you have manga as the source. You can turn anything into a TV show because there's just so much uh, material to digest, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how many chapters it is. So it's six volumes. So, yeah, so definitely a lot to compress into a single movie. Mm-hmm. Because, what, a lot of times they do like two or three episodes per volume of manga depending on the show. Something like that. Yeah, but that, like I'm saying, I mean, I don't think anyone would ever touch it today. I mean, I know people want, they've been try, talking that talk for years where they want to make a live action version of Akira, but I don't, if if someone was to say, can we remake this into like a miniseries and like reanimate it, that's basically like blasphemy. Like, you know, that'd be like remaking The Godfather. You can't do it, you know, but I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like. Even with its flaws, it's kind of this is what Acura is uh, in anime form. Yeah, and I I feel as if yeah you you couldn't even though I think if they had the time to do it, which they do now, they could make a story that would probably like a, make a little bit more sense, and you could actually have a sense of all these characters. I think, but again, it's it's just the whole history of what Akira is, and no one would ever touch that and try to remake it. I also wonder if they did remake it, like, how they would portray our modern society. Because it takes place in our modern time, even though for them it was, it was the distant future. Yeah, but, you know, if you start changing all that stuff, then all the fa- f- the manga faithful will get upset. And you'll be like, it's not like the manga. Yeah, if your goal is to be more faithful to the manga, you're kind of going against that. So Yeah, y- you can't make anyone win when it comes to, to mangas, I swear to God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, the manga fans say, oh, this is perfect, and other people or will say, like, oh, the manga explains this better. I was like, I don't care about the manga. I just like anime. Yeah. I mean, there was a few shows that I watched that I thought were so good, but then you have these people on the side going, manga was better. It's like, I don't care what you... I mean, go ahead, love the manga. Go ahead and enjoy it, but let me also enjoy the show for what it is. Yeah, like you're judging the anime as an anime, not how good of an adaptation it is. Yeah, that's why I really like the uh, the show uh, Akame Ga Kill. But oh, every okay. everybody was bitching and complaining about how the manga is like ten times better. But I love the anime. I thought it was great. I need to finish that. It's a really. It's, it, I think it's a very underrated show. A lot of people yeah. talk so much crap about it, but I love it. I've had it on hold since it came out. Maybe that should be our next podcast topic. All right. Oh. All right, so some months when I'm not already doing like five other podcasts, we should do that. Okay, I'm totally down. I wouldn't mind actually re- re-watching that show again. It's It's been a couple of years. Yeah, and that give me a reason to go back and actually finish it. Mm-hmm. Although I'd probably start from the beginning since I think I put it on hold like around episode seven or so. Episode seven, yeah, you got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah, it's like 25-ish episodes. Yeah, I think it's 25. Okay. All right, that's a good idea. But we're getting off topic again, which we seem to do a <laughs> we lot. We do that a okay. lot. <laughs> Something else, did the actions, the characters in here, do you think they made sense, or were they just, like, characters acting recklessly? Like, I remember when they were trying to infiltrate through the sewer, they had, like, the police on the flying things, and, like, people trying to shoot those down. I was like, that's it. And I was watching it and thinking, this is just a dumb idea. Why are you even trying this? <laughs> yeah. Then again, Kaneda jumped down onto Wong, and that worked, but he's the main character, so he's allowed to be stupid and have things work. Right, exactly. I don't know. I feel like, as far as the characters' choices, um, a lot of them made a very uh, bad choices. I mean, the, for starters, they're in a Barker gang. I mean, their parents are probably ashamed already. So, I mean, I mean that's one thing. But um, I just feel like... Yeah, like, I don't think anybody really made any good choices. Heck, he, honestly, if I was to think anyone that made decent choices was probably the shriveled up kids, just because they had no other choice and they knew. Yeah, <laughs> they were definitely the smartest ones, I'd say. And maybe that's part of the theme of the show. All these adults are trying to, like, 
to use this power. And they're like, no, this power is dangerous. Don't do dumb things with it. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, yeah, you might be right, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and then they go ahead and just do whatever they want with it. Yeah, something I thought was stupid but cool was like Connie Def fighting Tetsuo like near the end using that big laser gun thing. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was like, okay, you see that Tetsuo can stop anyone, but Kaneda isn't going to let that get into his way of, like, he has to make this right. He's too prideful to, like, run away. Yeah. And he actually did put up a decent fights, which I thought was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that, that scene was definitely pretty neat. It almost kind of makes me think, like, another sidebar conversation. Um, If uh, Tetsuo, like, had his powers and, like, didn't go all weird mutant baby at the end, do you think he could like beat some of the strongest anime characters out there? Because he was pretty strong. Yeah, it's hard to compare when you have like so many different powers. Mm-hmm. So it seems like Tetsuo can like keep anything away from him. Yeah, he's got that psychic like, ability. Well, it's like the pain ability, the ultimate push is kind of what that seemed like. Yeah. And how like in Naruto that was able to like stop anything from getting to pain. But the thing is, Tetsuo can only stop something if he knows it's coming toward him. True. So, like, if you hit him from behind or in a way he can't detect it or, like, below ground or something. Mm-hmm. And Tetsuo doesn't seem to, like, know how to fight that well. He just has so much power that it doesn't matter most of the time. Right. And I imagine if someone with that power knew how to fight and had that sort of thing, they would be pretty strong. So you should have a battle between Tetsuo and Mob from Mob Psycho. Hell, <laughs> now that would be... That would be one of the coolest fights. I mean, it would be f- so funny just seeing just seeing Mob just standing there going, I'm sorry, I don't... And then Tetsuo's going, how dare you defy me? <laughs> yeah, and like Mob might actually have to even try to fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, you saw that there's a new season of Mob coming out next oh, season? Or like in winter? Oh, hell yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that big time. I've loved yeah. the first season. The first season was amazing. My only complaint is that it ended too soon, but now we get a season two, so I'm happy. Yeah, and there's there you go. There's another show that I was all for them making another season, and they listened to the fans, thank God, and they made another season, so yes. Yep. Now let's hope this season doesn't end incomplete. Yeah, next year is going to be a lot of good shows. They have Mob Psycho 100 coming back. They have One Punch Man finally coming out in the spring. Okay, that's when that's coming. Yep, it's coming out April 2019. Okay. Because at first there was rumors saying it was coming back in 2020, and when I heard that, I was going to... Yeah, I heard that too, and I was surprised it was be so long. Yeah, but they finally had a... They have an official date, and they have like... Uh, I guess you can call it a teaser. It's just like a picture of... Of, uh, of uh, Saitama, Genos, and some dude... Okay. <laughs> that's that's all I got from it, and you don't need much to get excited for for One Punch Man, though. Oh yeah, One Punch Man. I, I, oh, I'm I'm gonna be so pumped for it. I, I'm gonna watch the season again just to just to get myself ready. Yeah, it's a fun show. Mm-hmm. Best show ever. Okay, so now that we're talking about some of the newer anime, another question is with the. Acura at the time was very revolutionary, but how well do you think it holds up now? Oh my gosh. Uh, I personally, and you probably know this of me, I I love hand-drawn animation. It just looks so much better than the... uh, I mean, you can use CGI if it's tasteful, but I swear there's some of these shows like, oh, I don't know, what's that one... Berserk, the new Berserk, that looks so bad that oh, yes. that it would be an improvement if they did hand-drawn animation. Right. Mm. And there are times where CGI can be like a cool way to do things, but yeah, I, like you can't get the style that Acura has using CG. I feel like... Even when you do it right. Yeah, I feel like, like only maybe a handful of shows can pull it off, like... Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is one of the best ones where they can do that look of hand drawn but also have CG in there and it just it go- like CG augmented. Yeah, yeah, and it looks good because it's just the style of the show. Yeah, the style's supposed to be weird, so weird CG is what you want. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's like or they had like Land of the Lustrious last year, which was a pure CG show, and that one was really good because I could see how they were able to do things with CG they could not do with hand drawn. Yeah. 
That's that's cool. That's cool that if they can pull it off. But I guess going back to the question uh, that I think I definitely think it holds up. It holds up as 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 a testament to that it it, it is a dying art as far as the hand drawn animation because I mean not just not just anime but I, I I guess just animation in general. There's a lot of movies going to the CG, like all those Disney films with Frozen and, you know, all those other, whatchamacallits, and then you see a hand-drawn sort of thing. It's almost, it's almost like claymation. Nobody does claymation anymore. It's, 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 it, oh, yeah. it feels like it's, it's more of a dying art, and then you see, I don't know, I feel like if you see something that's hand-drawn, you see the fruits of their labor, and you, it took them such a long time to make, and when it pays off, it just looks so good. <laughs> yeah, like all the CG they can do more stuff with but they still lose something by completely going away from the other to me that that's why in, in regular movies when you see practical effects practical effects look so much better than CG yeah you can have really good CG like in those Planet of the Apes movies like the the one where they have the motion capture on their face like Caesar all, all those ones but okay. but if you have movies where I don't know, you like horror films where you could just, if it doesn't look cheesy, whatever, you have like the thing and uh, I don't know, just all those real practical effects. It just really looks, to me, so much better than uh, than, than like CG. It looks more real. Oh, yeah. I guess you could say it's the same thing with hand-drawn. It just, to me, it just looks so much better when you see just that attention to detail and that, that the you can see the love and appreciation where they just put it in there and... I think, I mean, yeah, it kind of, like, the colors look a little more older, but I think it kind of looks better that way because it kind of makes the old feel of Akira look like that whole, you know, cyberpunk, futuristic, dystopian world, you know? Yeah, like, it cements Akira in that the time period it was made, which is what makes it so, like, revolutionary is when it was made. Mm-hmm. And it just... I guess, yeah, just overall, I think it just looks, it still holds up to this day. And if you want people to be blown away by really good hand drawn animation, show them that. Yeah, I don't think there's another show that offers as good of hand drawn animation, or at least pure hand drawn. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely can't think of any. Uh, speaking of the fact that this is was a revolutionary anime, uh, I like the fact that it doesn't really and I just now thought of this right off the top of my head, it, it doesn't really have the traditional, you know, anime eyes. The people, oh, yeah. the people actually look Japanese, you know? Like, the you could, you could I think that's kind of what makes it uh, universal, too. Like, because if you see somebody like, oh, I don't know if I want to give this a try, it looks like an anime because they look at the eyes, but they, they look at it um, solely just off looks as oh they're people you know you, you you could probably not even think it's an anime if you didn't know what anime was yeah like you look at K-On or Clannad and as good as those are <laughs> they're very much anime style Clannad those those eyes are the size of their face <laughs> it's so big exactly like you're not going to get a random person say oh this looks well they'll think okay why are you showing me this weird thing with giant eyes yeah yeah, so I think I think that's another thing that makes Akira stand out is that it's it's timeless, in a way. I think more than that, though, it's also not something that just applies to Japan. Like a lot of the anime shows, you have a lot of the common tropes in the anime, which again I enjoy them, but they can be off-putting for those not used to it. When Akira, I didn't really feel any of that. It was like a story that anyone can appreciate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like there was those few goofy moments, but. I mean, I, I honestly think they were just more goofy than they were the typical anime tropes like, I don't know, get punched and go flying 100 feet because of, you accidentally said hi to a woman, you know? <laughs> just, oh, <laughs> that does, yeah, that doesn't even feel anime. Or there was a conversation with, like, uh, Connie Dutt and his friend when his friend's bike was on fire. Yeah. And that was just like a grand bit of comedy that felt, which is just a good thing to have in that time, I felt. Yeah. Yeah, the world's ending, but, you know, let's laugh at the bike being on fire. <laughs> uh -huh. Because fire is fun. <laughs> and fire is f burning. <laughs> yes, fire. Very hot. <sighs> Good stuff. Uh, is that all the notes you have? Uh, let's see. 
Well, let's see. I have time to stop making sense. I have the colonel trying to shoot the monster even though they wouldn't do any good. But again, what else could he do? And that's kind of like military's like, okay, blow it up with guns. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Um, I, th- I figured his character was straight up just military. and Yeah, like what would a military do in this situation? And, you know, he's military because military. You know, he eats bullets and, and craps out you know, guns, you know, it's just all about that military. Yeah. He, he eats bullets, craps out regulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love the, that too, how he, it, all the way to the very end, he was like, what those people could, Oh, you're under arrest. And he's like, shoot him. <laughs> he, he, it's like, I'm not under arrest. I'm in charge now. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm not under arrest. You're under arrest. In fact, you're dead. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's how military he was. I'm going against the government like that. Yeah, it's like I mean, the military is like supposed to serve the people, even if that means going against the government, or like the military here, like serving the constitution, whether or not the government is going along with that. Eh, you know, well, if I, at least in theory, I was going to say, but you know, someone's going to be pointing a gun at your head, and all of a sudden you're under arrest. Eh. All that stuff goes out the window, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, what is good for the people is me shooting you. Yeah, yeah, that's what's good for the people. And then trying to convince everyone else, look at yourselves. You guys are under the influence. Join me. And they're like, okay. I love how easily they were to just be like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> All right. Two minutes ago, we wanted to take you in, but now we're like, uh, Okay. okay, let's see. You shot our, you shot our boss. So I'm not going to shoot you because I kind of want to live too. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like that's kind of what the situation was too. And yeah, a lot of a lot of weird dying after that. Like that one dude who was like really short died on a bunch of pills and he had a heart attack. And oh yeah, like the politician like trying to take all the money away too. Yeah, I love that too. It's a big giant. Overstuffed briefcase, brief briefcase or golden parachute, yeah, and <laughs> filled with money. Like, it's like, really? What are you gonna do when you're dead with sixty pills in your mouth? <laughs> what? what is, yeah, like, I take the pills and sell them, not eat them all. I, I, I almost think maybe he just needed a glass of water. You know, because you see, I think, you see that cup fall and it breaks, and it's like, dude, is water that scarce in the future? You just choked on a bunch of pills and you just. <laughs> That's all it took was yeah. Again, I think they needed like more explanation for like all the different sides of the conflict. Mm-hmm. What's your problem? How did he die? He just needed a glass of water, and he didn't get any. <laughs> yes, uh, very exciting. <laughs> all right, now I need more water, but I can wait till the end of the podcast. So I guess I think we're kind of nearing the end of it. So just a general uh, topic to leave off on. Uh, would you recommend uh, Acura, and to what audience? I would absolutely recommend Akira to just about any anime fan. I mean, obviously, if people are more into so the romantic comedies, I would say stay away from Akira. But if you're into the shonen action, uh, I don't know. If 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 you, if you just want a little piece of anime history, definitely watch Akira because it it holds up, and you can see the weirdness for yourself and you can appreciate all of it. Yeah, for me, I don't think I would recommend it because of the quality of the story, but more so for the historical significance and how it influenced so much. Mm-hmm. Especially for those newer to anime, they, they might want to see like, what was anime? Where did it come from? And then you can see this type of story and if they're new to anime, they might not want the anime style weirdness but they can just, like, see, here's a different type of storytelling. Now, if you want an actual good show, then watch Death Note. The, the, yeah, Death <laughs> Note. Not, not the Netflix one, but the, the actual anime. <laughs> so, did you hear Netflix, the Death, or the Netflix one is getting the second one? Yes, I heard that, and I was like, why? Just why? Uh, I'm kind of interested to see what they do with it. Uh, someone ex- uh, pretty much said... And I know we're going off on another tangent about Death Note, but uh, someone said it to me the best is that it's kind of like remaking a show that's already good, but then turning it into like an hour and a half movie. It's like, why? There's no point. Just watch the original and enjoy that versus this piece of shit. 
American version. I like the Netflix one more, right? But it's like, it's nowhere near how good the anime is. So I would, yeah, I would not tell someone to watch the Netflix one until they saw the anime. Then after they saw the anime one, it's like, okay, why watch the Netflix one when there, there, when there are so many better shows out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you're curious, it's like, okay, you might enjoy your evening. But like, okay, instead, go watch like Kill a Kill or Gurren Lagann or a hundred other awesome shows that you probably haven't seen. I will say... Cowboy Bebop is probably, uh, as far as like a, a doorway anime, probably one of the best, in my opinion. Oh yeah, yeah. That's another one where I didn't care for it as much, but because of how important it is, it's one that I think most people should at least try to watch to see what it's about. Oh yeah, I hopefully we'll make a review about it one of these days. But it's that was I watched Cowboy Bebop when it came out around the same time when I watched uh, Akira. Okay. Yeah, and I and so that was when it was like first getting onto American TVs. Yeah, that's when it. Um, yeah, it was on there. It was oh, the good old days of Adult Swim. It was like late at night on their Adult Swim block, and it was what was it? Cowboy Bebop, Inuyasha. Uh, there was a whole bunch of really good stuff. Yu Yu Hakusho, all those really good shows. Okay, yeah, I watched. I think I saw a little bit of Yu Yu Hakusho when it was on Toonami, like during the afternoons. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yep, that's how I got into Dragon Ball. And, yeah, I also got into, like, Kuroni Kenshin when they were showing it, too, and I was sad because he, like, switched it to a different time slot where I couldn't watch it as often. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I finally got to, like, watch the rest of the Kyoto arc, and that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good one. It was a lot of fun times after school, and now you can just watch all that stuff by streaming. Exactly. Streaming is nice. I think it's so funny how... After so many years, you know, as old as I am, Dragon Ball still on TV, <laughs> or or at least yeah. Dragon Ball still around. You know, I thought I, th- I thought it was done with it when I was a teenager, and now I'm an adult still watching it. Mm-hmm. It's cool how like I was getting into like these anime or like video games as a whole, and thinking, okay, there's good things for a kid to do, but now I'm an adult and still doing those things. Yeah, I, so it's cool how that's how it's like growing up with us. Yeah, it's because. I mean, my parents always told me, you're going to grow up one of these days and you're not going to like those cartoons anymore. And I, I'm i just, I'm still waiting for that to happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, like I went to multiple anime conventions this year as an adult because I could. Yeah, it's, I don't know about you because, I mean, I'm 31, but it's getting a little weird going to the anime conventions. I mean, I still see people my age and a little older, but I just see a bunch yeah. of younger people and I'm just like... Where were these people when I was younger? You know, why why didn't I have yeah. friends that wanted to go to these conventions? Hell, I didn't even know these conventions in, existed. Yeah, and I'm 27, so younger than you, but still older than probably most of the people there. Mm-hmm. And, like, the friends I go, go with are, like, in college or just recently graduated college, so I'm definitely older than them, but still, it's, like, cool to be with these people who I couldn't be with if it weren't for anime. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, so I guess that pretty much wraps up our thoughts about uh, Akira and about 12 other topics we came up with on the spot. <laughs> um, so there will be a link to Everything Anime's channel down below if you want to tell where else they can find you, if there are any other places. Uh, you can, um, I, let me think. <laughs> uh, underground, uh, there is also, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, do I have a Twitter? I don't think you do, so I don't follow you on it. No, I, I don't think I have a Twitter. So mostly, okay. just my YouTube. Oh, okay, I have a Twitch. I have a Twitch, because I actually do Twitch. Oh, right. So, yeah, you, like, put, you were starting to stream, and I was like, who is this guy? It's because I followed you, and I was like, oh, wait, you're everything enemy. Yeah. I should go say hi before I go to bed. Yeah, I just love that, too. I'm like, someone's talking to me in chat. Oh, oh, this is this is Rising Sun. Hey, man. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Uh, send a little love my way, and uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, hoping to still get back onto the the YouTube thing. It's it's it's. I'm hoping to still do it. It's just you know YouTube just keeps wanting to delete all my videos. Yeah. Oh, and mail him tacos. Do that. Mail me tacos, please. Yes. I don't know his address. I don't think he'll give it to you, but just mail him tacos. <laughs> I can uh, totally imagine what you and your family would think you just got tacos in the mail one day. You know what? 
a taco a day makes me say yay. Is, isn't isn't like isn't that the saying? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it was good to have you. If you don't know me, I'm Rising Sun. You are on my channel, so subscribe if you want. I'm on Twitter, so feel free to follow me there. I post thoughts about the anime, random other thoughts I have. And I also have a Discord server, which is not that active. Those are actually people talking in two days, which surprised me. So if you want to talk to me there, that's a good place to do it. Otherwise, leave random comments. I like reading them, even if some of them are kind of weird. Let's get you to 250. Yep, my goal is 250 by the end of the month. And it probably won't happen, but let's do it anyway. Are you going to do a video when you get 250? Um, I will do another video game live stream when I hit 250. Oh, you're not going to do another hentai review? Oh, I got an idea for doing that from a podcast I recorded last night. Yes! <laughs> it's going to be... It's going to be amazing. No. If a certain person gave me an idea what to do, and I think it's a brilliant idea, so I'm going to do it. Oh, that was that was one of the biz videos I saw you do when you were like, <laughs> there is a... <laughs> I don't know what you said at the beginning, but it was so inspiring, and then you were like, this is a hentai. It's like, <laughs> it's like there are stories that speak to the heart, <laughs> that speak to the soul, that speak to other places. Yeah, that was great. I, I was that review was pure improv though. I was in a Discord call with friends. Was like, I want to review hentai right now. I'm gonna do that. Bring up Audacity. Mm -hmm. And and it's funny because that that's like a high viewed video of yours. Yeah, it's nearly a thousand views. It's like 900 as of last night. I mean, I think when it comes to anime, I, I, I when it came to my video that got deleted was Kisses. That had like at the highest peak was like 35 thousand. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, Perfect Blue is my biggest one, and that's, like, I think close to 20,000. But, like, the thumbnail is pure clickbait, though it fits. Mm -hmm. so, and it, so, yeah. Yeah. It makes me mad because I wish it was still up because I probably would have way more than 35,000 now if it was still up there. But whatever. What can you do? Yep. So, anyway. uh, so thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, go follow or subscribe or whatever the buttons do. And we'll talk to you next time about some other thing that we'll figure out later. Sounds good. All right, talk to you then. Later.